Welcome to section 5.4. All right, general people, to kick off this lecture, what we're going to do is going to be a culmination problem. So go ahead and try to do this as your quiz question. And after you're done, hit the right answer. All right, general people, let's go ahead and tackle this problem out. Let's take a look at the information that they gave us. We've got temperature, we've got pressure, and we're after volume. So a good place to start is let's start with our ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. Okay, general people, what I like to do is I like to go ahead and write down all the variables that I have if I think I want to use an equation. So in this case, we have P, our pressure, and we were given it at 0.85 atm. The volume is something that we are looking for. So this is going to be the X and this is going to be what we need. R is our gas constant. And because I'm using the ideal gas law, this is the R that I want to go ahead and use. We also have our temperature. And remember, if we want to use PV equals NRT, we should change that to Kelvin. Now you'll notice that I skipped N, which is the number of moles. And that's because we weren't given the number of moles here. However, we were given other information. So what we're going to try to do first is before we use PV equals NRT is can we fill out N so that we can use that PV equals NRT equation. Now what I am given is I am given the grams of my reactant and I'm trying to evaluate PV equals NRT with respect to my gas, hydrogen gas. So I want you guys to be careful. When you use PV equals NRT, everything has to be in terms of one gas. So in this case, what I need to do is I need to get the moles of hydrogen gas. Like I said, we have information on one of our reactants. So let's go ahead and start there. Now, what I need to do is I have something on the reactant side and I know that I can relate it to something on the product side by changing to mole. So I'm going to look on the periodic table get the molecular weight, and I'm going to go ahead and calculate the number of moles of sodium. Now, using the balanced equation that I gave you, we can use the stoichiometric coefficients and get the moles of H2 that we're after. Now, what I can do is I can go ahead and put this in my table. Now, what I can see is I only have one variable in PV equals NRT. So let's go ahead and solve for that. What I can do is I can divide both sides by pressure. And if I do that, I get this expression. Now all I have to do is plug in my value. So I can plug in my N, I can plug in my R, I can plug in my temperature, and finally I can divide by that pressure. You'll notice that all the units will cancel out. Moles cancels out with moles, Kelvin with Kelvin, ATM with ATM, and I am left with liters, which is what we measure volume in. Doing the calculation out, I get 4.24 liters as my volume. Okay, now that we've done this one, let's go ahead and try another quiz question. So what I want you guys to do is think about this question and see if there's an equation that can help you out. Before I get to that question, let's go ahead and do a little bit of derivation. So what I'm going to start out with is I'm going to start writing the molar mass of something. Now remember what the molar mass is. It's going to be the mass of something divided by the moles of something. And that's why you see molar mass in units of grams per mole. Now the other thing that we are looking for in that problem is density. And density is going to be the mass over the volume. So let's go ahead and see if we can do some substitution. The first thing we can do is we can start out with our gas law, PV equals NRT. If I go ahead and rearrange this, I can divide by pressure again to get that last expression that we saw on our last quiz question. Then what I can do is I can go ahead and take the inverse. So doing this, I can go ahead and substitute this in for that one over V expression. And so what I can write is this middle expression right here, that density equals the pressure times the mass 
over moles times R times the temperature. Now what I see here is the mass over the number of moles. And I just told you that that is equivalent to molar mass. So I can make that substitution in and I get this final expression. Now the last thing I can do is I can go ahead and rearrange this formula into this one right here. Now what you guys will see is these are the two most popular versions of this equation. We either write molar mass equals density times R times T divided by the pressure, or the one on your information sheet says density equals the pressure times the molar mass divided by RT. Now I want you guys to be careful here. M is a molar mass. It is not molarity in here. But let's go ahead and do the take home message from this. What we see here is that density and molar mass are going to be directly proportional. That means when one goes up, the other is going to go up as well. Now this is going to be true so long as I hold the pressure and the temperature constant. So if I'm at STP, well that means my pressure and my temperature are going to be constant. And so that means that the higher my molar mass, the higher the density is going to be. So to answer this question, all you have to do was figure out which gas had the highest molar mass or which gas had the higher weight. And argon is the heaviest gas here. It is about 40 grams per mole. So argon is going to be the densest gas. Well, I hope that made sense, Chem1A, and remember to stay safe.